how's it going? So a couple of things today. First off, I've got some new house plants I want to show you. Um, I've been in a complete house plant mood lately, and I think it's because we're kind of heading into fall a little bit. I mean, it's supposed to be 100 degrees here today, which I'm ignoring. Uh, but you guys know spring and summer, I completely abandoned my houseplants because we're in full on outdoor gardening mode and we still kind of are. Um, but I am so looking forward to this next season and I just want to redo some things inside. So I've got 12 or so new little houseplants I thought you guys might enjoy seeing. A couple of which I'm going to be planting in a new copper terrarium I just got from Gardener's Supply. And the second thing I want to do is uh, stain a piece of concrete that I have out in the garden garden um, and it's a piece that I've had for the very longest of everything that I have out in my garden. This is a piece that Aaron bought for me. I think it was either our first or second Christmas together. So it's at least a 12 year old piece in my garden. So anyway, let me turn the camera around and just show you what I've got on my table. So here's all of my stuff. I've got some moss out here and soil and some stones. And then this is my terrarium right here. Isn't that so pretty? And I love the fact that it has a reservoir built into it. So I don't have to put a different container in there. Oh, you can see Russell's back there on that chair. Russell, hey buddy. Look at those thumbs. You've got like a thumb plus one. I also found this little bird's nest on the ground like a long time ago. And I've had it kind of in my uh, terrarium slash fairy garden supplies. And I thought it might look cute worked into this terrarium as like a little decorative item. We'll see. So the first three here I wanted to talk about are different types of ferns. They all have a very unique look to them. Um, the first one here, it's called a rabbit's foot fern. And I really like these because they just, I mean, they have that classic fern look, but they grow a little bit shorter, say so a little bit more petite, but I think that they got their name by the way they spread. So they spread by rhizome, but the rhizomes look like furry rabbit feet. You can see one starting. Um, and it will just keep growing and it'll root in and create new little ferns and you can actually cut those off and propagate new ferns that way. Um, but they kind of look cool, like growing over the side of containers, like being able to see that detail is really neat. This one right here is called a green fantasy fern and I have a really hard time like trying to put into words how to explain what this looks like, but it looks like each individual leaf then has other individual leaves coming off of it with little leaves. Like it's just, I can't even explain it. It looks very fluffy. Um, it's got just a really neat look. And this is a type of sword fern. And then we have a lemon button fern. Button ferns are awesome. The button fern out of all three of these, to me, like rabbit's foot ferns are not fussy. This one is like medium. This one is a little bit more for me because we just live in a really dry climate. You guys know we're in high desert. Um, so we have very low humidity. And the thing about these, if they're in too dry of a climate, they will start to brown, like the foliage will brown and dry. So you wanna put them in a spot where they can receive a higher humidity or you know, just keep them away from air vents and things like that or doors where they're getting gusts of dry air. Um, you can put them in terrarium sort of situations are great because the humidity is just naturally higher in, in situations like that. I might put the rabbit's foot fern in here with another one of these. I'm not sure yet. Um, they also, all the ferns don't want to dry out completely. They don't want to be soggy though. Like you don't want to bog them down. They don't like that. Um, but you want to keep them on a consistent enough schedule to where uh, they're not being allowed to dry out. So I usually check all of my houseplants every Friday is houseplant day. And whether they need water or not, I usually put my eyes on every single one of my houseplants um, and make sure that, you know, if they need water, I give them some. And ferns are definitely one they get water every single week. Um, so those are the ferns. Okay, so this one right here in the center, I actually bought three of these. These are called a Frankie Fetonia. And these really do well in low, low light situations, which is something that a lot of us deal with in our homes. Like every single room doesn't have perfect windows and perfect lighting. So sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to find plants that have this kind of color that do really well in that sort of situation. So this is a really great one. And actually I am planning on using one of these because in the terrarium, because I thought the pink with the copper would look really pretty. These do not want to dry completely out either. Um, I find that if they either get too much sun, like any direct sun on their leaves, or if they're allowed to dry out, their leaves were also will also start to brown and crisp up a little bit. So I actually thought that, you know, something like this might be a good mix in a terrarium together because they do enjoy some somewhat of the same growing situations, even though this one likes a little bit more light. This one can take low to medium light. Next is the purple waffle and the color and texture of this one are just 
really great. I love the puckered leaves. The underside of them are this purplish pink color, but you can see like the newer leaves that come out are um, not unfurled all the way. So you can see more pink and then you see the deep green of the fully opened leaves. So you see like little flecks of that pinkish purple coming out and it just looks like a very dimensional, beautiful looking plant. Now this one likes medium light and I find that you can let it dry out just a tiny bit more between waterings than like your Fetonia or your ferns, but I keep it on a once a week watering schedule. That seems to keep most of my house plants really happy. And I wish I could tell you exactly how much water to give. I get questions about that a lot. Like, should I give it a quarter cup or a half cup? And it's so hard to say because it's very subjective to your climate, the conditions inside your house, what kind of pot it's in, soil it's in, um, exactly what kind of light it's in. Um, so it's just something that you have to almost gauge yourself. I mean, you can kind of know like, okay, so cactus don't like water very often. I, I need to let those dry out between waterings. You know generally, you know, what your plant needs, but then it will be a little bit different based on your conditions. Um, so I just recommend when you bring a new house plant home, finger test it every day for the first two or three weeks. I mean, it's a very small investment of time to figure out how long it takes from the, the time you water it to the time that soil, that very top layer of soil is feeling a little bit dry. And that's usually when you need to give it more water. That way you can kind of know how many days between. They can generally go a little bit longer between waterings in the winter time when it's colder, light's not as intense and so on. So anyway, this is a type of Hemographis alternata, I believe. This is also a Hemographis, um, but it's a Hemographis rapanda which really, I don't know if that means a lot to you guys. It really doesn't mean that much to me. I usually with house plants, just like, oh, these, these look pretty. These have a pretty color um, and I just go with it. Uh, but this one is called a dragon tongue is it's uh, kind of common name. And these I treat just about the same as this one right here. Uh, once a week watering, I take medium light. And I just think the color is really reminiscent. I mean, it's very similar to the purple waffle, but the leaf shape is tremendously different and it's fun to have some different textures. Okay, last group of plants. So first up on this side, I've got two different types of ivy. This one's called a Royal Hustler Ivy and this one's Little Herman. These are really versatile plants. So they do the best in medium light, but they can tolerate lower light situations. They won't grow quite as quickly or as lush as they would if they had a little bit more light but they're one that if you need to kind of push the envelope a little bit, you can you know, usually do that with this. Um, they do not like to be overly wet. And I think that that's something that um, I've gotten wrong in the past. So I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I used to think that they liked a lot more water than they really do. It's best to keep them a little tiny bit more on the dry side than it is to overwater them um, because their leaves will start to drop off on the bottom. They'll start to yellow and drop really quickly, but they're so versatile because you can put them in hanging baskets or like on a high shelf where you kind of want some foliage to drape down um, and you can use them in mixed planters really well just because they're not fussy um, so they're just a really great plant and then this last one is a teardrop peperomia and I'm going to twist it so you can see some of this variegation shining through here so this one also is a medium light lover. Like none of these plants that I have here require really bright light, which is awesome. Very versatile. Uh, this one right here is probably the lowest maintenance out of all of these to me anyway. Usually I can go, you know, a week and a half to two weeks between watering on these um, and they do really well. I do check them every week though. I just kind of have that habit, which I think is a good habit to start when you want your houseplants to look really good. Um, but this one has just a really pretty variegation to it. And I find that these do great in mixed planters. Also really nice in um, like if you have a container, you want to keep a plant a little bit smaller, like a really small spot. It takes to being root bound really well. Um, so I've just just had some really great luck with this type of plant. Um, okay, so now what I'm gonna do is kind of clear everything off and then I'm gonna set up my terrarium and supplies. And I'm just gonna do that really quick. We've done a lot of videos talking about how I don't actually put a gravel layer at the bottom. I kind of create a faux gravel layer. I just put a little bit against the glass around the sides, but my soil goes all the way down. It's actually better for the plants that way. Um, and then I'm going to plant. I'll show you what it looks like in the end. Oh, dang, that was way too fast.
didn't that turn out so pretty? I love it. I love that you can see each individual plant because they're so contrasted. They all look so different. So I used the dragon's tongue in the back. I actually didn't use the whole thing. Uh, it was kind of in three sections, so I was able to split it. And so I'll use this in something else. And same with the Frankie Fetonia. That was also kind of in three sections. So I split two off and then I've got the one left. And then the whole rabbit's foot fern went in. Um, but they fit really beautifully. And you can see the layers here. So there's a layer of gravel, but like I said, it doesn't go all the way through the whole bottom. It's just on the outside, right up against the glass. And then there's a layer of moss. And this is preserved reindeer moss, super moss brand. And I think it's really pretty. Like that's a really pretty moss. Um, and that is keeping any soil from kind of seeping into the gravel layer right here. Um, but the soil in the interior actually goes all the way to the bottom and it fills up most of this reservoir. Uh, and I used, open the bag up upside down, but I used just the regular Espoma organic potting mix for this blend of house plants. They should do really well. And then I finished off with another little layer of gravel and then some larger stones uh, just for decorative reasons. And I still have the bird's nest. I will use this one of these days. I am super excited about this and I will link to all of this stuff, all the supplies in the terrarium. Plus I'll put a list of all the plants that I just talked about down in the description if you wanna learn more about any of those things. Um, but now I'm gonna go uh, stain the concrete. So I'm gonna grab my stain, stop by the barn and grab a pair of, I have a box of like surgical gloves. Um, and I used to never wear stuff like that when I stained or painted, I just let my hands get to be a huge wreck, but I've grown up a little bit. So I'm gonna go get those gloves and then we'll go look at that piece of concrete. So here she is, this is a little peasant girl. I remember when Aaron gave her to me, he just tossed a blanket over the top of her to wrap it. <laughs> I don't know how else you would wrap a piece of concrete, it worked but she is really heavy. I'm going to attempt to move her onto this piece of plastic so she's not sitting on mulch for the stain job. So you can see where I'm at in the garden. It's very bright, sunny, and it's getting very warm out here at this point. Um, but the grand three-tier Kensington fountain, I just cleaned that out a couple of days ago and it's looking very fresh. The gar is beautiful. The boxwoods need a trim very badly. It's been too hot. We're supposed to get a downshift in temperatures this next weekend, so I'm hoping that the 10 day at that point looks consistent enough to where I can trim these boxwoods and not have them burn. Um, but my hope with staining this uh, peasant statue is that it'll give me a fresh perspective, maybe moving her to another area of the garden as well. My style has changed so dramatically throughout the years, um, you know, and it's constantly evolving that I don't love this statue right now. So I'm hoping staining it just makes her fresh to me. Otherwise I may rehome her, uh, but she does have some sentimental value. So I thought I'd give this a shot. Wanted to show you the stain up close. Now they did have concrete stain, but it was $30 for a gallon. And this is such a small, look at Russell. <laughs> he followed me out here. This is such a small project. I did not want to spend $30 on this, the concrete stain, which supposedly it soaks into the concrete a little bit further, but I've always used wood stain. Danish oil, whatever I've had on hand really, and it works well. Um, so they, they had these in quartz and this is the color carbon gray. So we'll see what happens. Ooh, that's pretty. Ooh, too dark. Okay, this is much too matte. In fact, I was able to rub off some of it. I'm glad I started on the back of her. Um, and then I used a little water, but I'm gonna go grab some wood stain and Danish oil possibly to dilute this color a little bit more. We'll see, hopefully by the end, I don't completely wreck this piece.
Oh, I like her so much better now. That gave her a new lease on life, I think. Much better color. Um, so this is what I ended up doing. I did kind of a blend. So this one right here that I started with went on just like a paint. It was really thick and it wasn't, it wasn't like the stains that I'm used to using. Like you couldn't see any detail behind it. So it just looked like a chunk, like a matte chunk. And I think that that would have made it to where you wouldn't have been able to see some of this detail. See how the stain, it like soaks in differently in different areas. So you can see some lighter and then some darker. And so you can really see the detail still. So what I ended up doing, I have clearly this old can of early American colored wood finished Minwax stain. And I had a little bit of this special walnut, like there was a tiny bit left in here. So I poured a little bit of this in, mixed it in there, and then loaded up my paintbrush twice with this gray and just blended it all together. <laughs> and I think what I ended up with was really nice. I think that's a good look. So this one right here, I probably won't use again. I mean, maybe if I wanted to paint some of our sidewalks because we do use some stain, some concrete stain on sidewalks that's similar. Um, but I would probably go with one of the wood finish Minwax stains like I normally do going forward with her. Um, I also take paper towels. You can see them right here. And I think I turned the camera off uh, and I just kind of dab the whole thing and like kind of rub in some of the stain in some areas and dab off the excess in other areas. And that also helps to get more of the detail showing through because that stain, it doesn't soak all the way in. Um, some of it stays on the surface, you know, until it dries. Um, so you can kind of, you've got a little window where you can mess with it a little bit. So I'm going to let her dry for just a little bit and then we'll go place her somewhere in the garden. Also wearing gloves didn't really help. I don't know how I manage to still get my hands all dirty. She looks really pretty right here. Isn't that so much better than where she was at? I love it when pieces are worked into a flower bed to where they don't stick out. I mean, I've clearly got pieces of concrete that stick out, but I also love when they just look tucked in and just like a little whimsical piece here and there in the garden. I am so pleased with how she turned out and this spot looks like it was just meant for her. And this is an interesting area because we're midday right now and it's very shaded in this spot, yet the Russian sage is blooming its head off. The sedum looks great. There's a juniper and a blue spruce right behind her. So this spot must get like early morning sun and maybe a little bit in the afternoon, but like there's a giant ash tree right above me right here and then the blue spruce that shade this spot. Kind of pretty looking at the garden from that perspective, isn't it? The tree canopies. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. I hope it was helpful to you guys to see her transformation and some of the things that I use. I totally don't use the proper stuff, like the proper concrete stains and all of that. And maybe one day I will graduate into using those things. I typically use what I have on hand, which in this case would have been better just going downstairs to see what kind of stains I had already because that gray stain I bought was not good. So at least take that little tidbit from this video. That gray stain was not good for statues. It was way too paint-like and I think it would have been a bad deal. So um, also maybe paint a smaller practice swatch on the back of whatever you're trying to refinish before hauling off and painting almost the entire back of it. That'd probably be good too, but fortunately she's tucked in. You can't see the back of her, nor can you really even see the bottom of her. 
she looks like she's just tucked in. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I need to go water now that it's midday. I can see usually whenever I do a project in the morning, I can see all my plants just kind of like holding on for me to come around with the hose and it is hot today. So anyway, that's what I'm going to go do. Thanks guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.